and I sold my wedding gown for almost what I paid for it. Mm -hmm. um, my father gave me some money, and he had hardly done that before, but he knew I was in, you know, somebody else gave me a car. A man at church stepped forward to, to do the maintenance on that car. God just kept providing for my needs through people, through through churches, through just little itty bitty things that would come to me. And that, a husband to the husband less. Yes. That's right. He kept saying to me, I am your husband, Laura, and mm -hmm. I don't love like people love. Mm -hmm. I won't walk out. It was hard to trust him during that. Say that again, because I think for a lot of you know our viewers, because we have 40 to 50 percent of people divorcing in and out of the church. That's right. Right? But you just said that I will not walk out on you. Yes, and God does not. God is patient with us. We cannot out -sin his love. Even during that season when I said I was drinking too much and making some poor choices during that time because my grief was so heavy, Certainly I had to turn and repent for some of the things I did during that time. But I think it's so important to know that we cannot out sin the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. That um, when we say in the church that divorced people have no value, that they can't have ministry anymore, we are saying that divorce is more powerful than the blood of Jesus Christ. That is what we are saying when we say that. Preach it, sister. <laughs> I know it. I'm telling you. I love it. I love it. Like, I love it. Love it. Love yeah. the words of life, you know, for yes. anyone going to it. That's, that's great. It is so, and I mean, if he could redeem me and pull me out of that pit of despair, depression, drunkenness, and feeling like I had no value, zero value, no one will ever love me again, is what the evil one whispered in my ear. Look mm. at this is the proof. You are worthless. Mm -hmm. And I had to just keep putting God's word. So the first season I did, you know, do some destructive things and I don't recommend that. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually when I came to my senses and realized so my Christian friends. You're saying allow God to fill the vacuum that this lost relationship creates in your life. Don't try to fill it with, you know, drugs or alcohol or even another relationship yes. right away. Biggest mistake people make mm -hmm. is jumping into a new relationship because mm -hmm. it numbs the pain. See, it anesthetizes mm -hmm. the hurt in your heart. Someone thinks I'm pretty. Someone thinks I'm smart. Someone thinks that I have value. And so we get trapped in that praise and that, that high that you get of a new relationship. And what that does is that anesthetizes the grief, the grieving process. Mm -hmm. It would be similar as if you broke your foot and looked down and said, oh, it's really painful, and then shot it full of Novocaine mm -hmm. and said, I'm not having any pain at all. I can walk on this. I can run on this. We can because it's not hurting right at that moment, but you're doing more damage to that foot over the long run than if you had put it in a cast, elevated it, and said, I'm not gonna walk on this foot for a while while it heals. And I, that's your heart. And I think that's what I loved about your book is that you really encourage people to, you, you explain the stages of grief, you talk to them about going through the stages of grief. And I was really interested in the whole idea you said when one person is determined to leave the relationship and you're trying to hold on, <laughs> that's never gonna work long term. And you said acceptance was really the beginning of your healing That's when right. you got to acceptance. What are those stages that people have to go through? Well, first thing, they go into a denial. You know, they go in, this isn't happening to me. I am a Christian. This doesn't happen to Christians. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially wonderful Christians like me, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it happens to other people. But That's right. That's right. That's right. That happens to women that are like bad to their husbands, you know. And, and I've tried to be so good to my husband, so it couldn't possibly be happening to me. So it's sort of that denial. And then you go into a loneliness or a depression. You, you really sink into the pit. And it's important to know that uh, the stages of grief aren't, don't go in like a set Order. calendar. Yeah, no, you know, yeah. you float in and out of those. Um, there's a sense of anger. You go through a phase of deep rage and anger because you feel so out of control. Someone else is determining my future. Mm -hmm. See, I chose to be married, yeah. but being divorced was chosen for me. We've been yeah, betrayed. Been mm -hmm. And I'm so angry. It's I'd, not fair. How can they do that? Somebody's got to pay. That's right. <laughs> Justice. Right. Right. And then you move on into an acceptance, more of a, okay, if you're getting healthy, if you're part of a support group or you're getting healthy counsel, some people stay stuck in that. So I meet people 20 years later, they're still circling the drain of anger and bitterness and how mm -hmm. dare you do this to me. So it's not an automatic process. It's a, cho it's a choice mm -hmm. to walk through this. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of go into an acceptance and that's where you, okay, I'm single again. And then you go in, you have to get to a place of where you learn how to forgive. 
and a lot of people don't like the word forgiveness, in particular when it comes to divorce, I encourage them to say this one prayer. Lord, teach me to be willing to become willing. Mm. You have beautiful prayers yeah. in your book. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you I get so many emails prayers. of people telling me, your prayers alone were worth oh. the book. <laughs> and that's key because a lot of times, and in my own experience, you can get stuck in me. Yes. Woe is me. I didn't deserve this. I'm, I'm, you know, I just want to cover, you know, my face and not get up. Yes. And always, always, my, you know, my church, the girls here on the couch, my parents, they were always like, Mel, eyes off you eyes on God. Mm -hmm. And it was something. It's like I would do that. I would actually sing worship songs in my car. Yes. I'd write in my journal. But as soon as you turn your eyes on God mm -hmm. and in worship, everything changes. Yes. It's a sense of, wait a second, there's peace, there's love, I'm receiving, I'm hearing. Yes. And there just is a sense of tr that true sort of security in Him versus everything else that's falling apart in my own life. Right. And this is a yeah. woman's number one need, isn't it? Safety and security. That's right. Which becomes the tender trap if you're reaching out for the replacement man in That's your life. That's right. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we people want it who, to be the Lord. People yeah. who remarry yeah. within two years of their divorce have an 80% divorce rate. Really? Wow. Yes. That's so that's scary. why another reason why it's very important to refrain from become single again. Mm. Become a whole, healthy, healed, single again person before you step into a new relationship. Don't look to that relationship to, to fix you, to mend you, mm -hmm. because it doesn't work. It ends up being a crisis. <laughs> Laura, your book is When I Do Becomes I Don't. Excellent resource. Where can people pick up a copy of this book? Almost anywhere, major bookstores, anywhere books are sold, or if they don't have it at the store, they can order them online, Amazon, any place that you mm -hmm. normally buy. You know, uh, it's with a major publisher, so it really can be get anywhere. Ev everyone needs this book. I mean, I know <laughs> that we plug books, but I mean, every person that's going through Yes, divorce, because I have a whole yeah. chapter, Someone I Love is Divorcing. Mm. And so it explains what to do and not to do for the mm -hmm. friend, family member, coworker that is divorcing because we all know somebody. <laughs> Laura, thank you so much for being with us on Full Circle. And I just want to remind you that the phone number that you've seen throughout this half hour is our prayer line. And someone is there to talk with you, pray with you if you're going through some really dark times in your life right now.